this is John and John's Take. Today we have a guest um, who is a, a very outstanding individual from the community. Her name is NJ, who is a retired um, registered nurse, and she'll explain a little bit more about herself in a minute. Uh, one of the things we want to do today is to make sure that you know that what we're talking about, which will be four easy steps to healthy aging, and there's a little bit of a story behind that, so which we will get into. But before we start, uh, let me just say that the information on this podcast is not intended to be medical advice. Please consult with your health care provider about you or your loved one's medical condition. Now, to learn more about brain health, please visit caro.org slash news. You can find an article under Healthy Body and Healthy Mind. Um, a little bit about how this subject came up is uh, we had a discussion in the office about Alzheimer's because uh, it seems to be becoming more and more prevalent uh, and closer and closer to home. And somebody came up with, um, they said, four pillars of uh, health which will prevent the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. And those were sleep, diet, exercise, and socialization. So we started looking into this, and it turns out that at age 65, about 10% uh, those individuals will have diagnosed uh, Alzheimer's. And I started thinking about, well, what about the other 90% of people that aren't going to have Alzheimer's at that age? And then we started looking at, well, we got sleep, diet, exercise, and socialization. And if we start uh, looking into those items, wouldn't it uh, benefit everybody as they age? And so uh, we, we're going to make this more general and less specific about the uh, Alzheimer's dementia. So I mentioned uh, NJ is our guest today, and uh, I'd like uh, to invite her to share a little bit about her story. Hi there. Yes, I go by NJ. Uh, I'm a retired oncology nurse. I've been retired for about eight years, and I started volunteering with Cato about right after I retired, so maybe seven years ago. And they say that uh, when you retire, you can relax and, you know, enjoy your life. And I do enjoy my life, but I'm just as busy. So um, I'll be sharing that with you as we discuss um, staying uh, in contact with people and exercising. But, John, thank you very much for inviting me here today. And... Um Let's start out with something that's very near and dear to me. It's um, eating and food and diet. And <clears throat> as a senior, we look at uh, food and, and cooking and nutrition a little bit differently than we did when we were much younger. Uh, one of the things I remember hearing probably you know, 10, 15, maybe even 20 years ago is people talking about the Mediterranean diet. Uh, that being very healthy. And of course, back then we weren't thinking about getting old, but the Mediterranean diet has just uh, really uh, come into being. It's very, very popular. But um, Angie, could you kind of explain what that might be to uh, our audience? Uh, the Mediterranean diet is just a, a, a way of eating uh, the traditional cuisines or foods that the 16 countries surrounding the Mediterranean Sea uh, eat. And it's mostly the Italian and the people in Greece that were adapting their way of eating. And that includes fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts and seeds. And olive oil is very important. It's a good fat. And then they eat very little um, of the meats and um, eggs and poultry. And wine is okay with these uh, Mediterranean uh, diets. So, yeah, it's very interesting and not that difficult to follow. You know, one thing that uh, we looked up, people would talk about and become, again, very popular is uh, something called blue zones. And blue zones are, there have been studies done, and there's certain areas in the, United, uh, in the world where the uh, people who are over a hundred years old or higher percent per capita than any place else in the world. And there's a couple, uh, one is in Costa Rica, one is in Sardinia, Italy. Uh, amazingly enough, locally, Loma Linda, California, 
and uh, Okinawa, Japan. Since uh, a majority of folks that will be listening have uh, some ties to uh, Japan, I thought it'd be interesting to look into you know the Okinawan diet and see uh, what causes them to be able to be uh, healthy and active at over 100 years old. Um, Angie, what do you think about the, the Okinawan diet? I looked at the uh, little TV show on Netflix. Uh, Dan Butner with uh, National Geographic has a, a, a show there, and I encourage all of you to watch it. It's called um, Live to 100, The Secrets of the Blue Zones. And for the Okinawan people, it showed that over 60% of their diet is plant-based or eating vegetables, and the remainder would be... Um, uh, some of the uh, very minimal fish, meats, uh, do have a lot of tofu or fermented foods. One uh, food that they eat a lot of is the purple potato. And I actually made a little uh, purple potato uh, food that I'm going to give John um, a little bit later. But uh, I think because um, mainly Asians are listening to this program that it's easier to eat Japanese food, so following the Okinawan diet, I don't think will be that difficult. Um, I'm trying to adapt to it, um, and it, it's not, not that difficult. I think uh, people who really want to will be able to do it. You know, what I found is uh, when, you, when you look at you know, reducing the amount of meat in your diet, if you were to look at uh, a lot of Asian foods, uh, Indian food, uh, Mexican food. It, it's very, very easy to find very satisfying meals without uh, <coughs> the addition of, addi uh, addition of, of proteins. Um, you know, the other thing that uh, Angie and I had, had talked about is uh, being healthy is uh, she has put together a, a breakfast menu that sounds very interesting, and uh, she offered to share it with us today. What I've done is I go to the grocery store, any of the major stores, are, <clears throat> and I buy the, uh, the bag or the plastic container of salad greens, and I think you've all seen it. They're pre-washed and everything. Um, I was going to read the ingredients, but you know what salad mixture is. But anyway, just uh, getting a skillet, uh, putting in some olive oil, which is a good oil, about two tablespoons, or just till the bottom is shiny with the oil, heating it up. Uh, grabbing two big handfuls of the salad mixture and sauteing it or stirring it around. And I add a few slices of tofu for protein and then uh, drizzle a little bit of shoyu or soy sauce and sesame seed oil. And you'll be surprised how delicious it is. And as a breakfast uh, meal, it um, stays in your stomach so you're not grumbling away, you know, an hour later if you ate a donut. So... I think John said he was going to try it. I am dedicated to trying this probably next week because uh, I forgot to get it last time I went to the market. Um, s some other things about uh, diet that uh, I, I looked up was um, there are five things that are recommended um, that could be either as a, as a meal or snacks. And the first one, they said, is very, very good for well, general health, is fatty fish. And fatty fish would be like, like sardines, anchovies, salmon, those types of fish which are very, very uh, high in, what do you call it, fish fat? And uh, very easy to eat. They recommend five, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, they recommend like three servings of fish a week for your meals. Now, before everybody freaks out and says, I don't want to eat, fish three times a week. Um, you don't have to look at it as having fish for dinner three times a week. If you have salmon or mackerel or something once a week for dinner, uh, have a tuna sandwich for lunch. And uh, if you want snacks, uh, canned anchovies or canned sardines well, would be fine. And what I found out also is the canned fish are just as good as uh, fresh fish. And if people are worried about mercury, which, you know, it is a concern, especially on the West Coast, it's said that uh, the smaller the fish, uh, the less mercury there's a, a possibility of having. So like the sardines, anchovies, 
uh, are going to be a, a lot have a lot less mercury than like a swordfish or something like that. When you we talk about the different servings and all, don't be intimidated. Uh, do something that you feel comfortable with. And again, tuna salad sandwich would be just as good as a, a piece of fish for dinner. A can of anchovies or sardines, again, is just as good as the tuna sandwich. Another couple of things are pumpkin seeds. Uh, very healthy. Dark chocolate. Um, I think 70% uh, or more. And the uh, spice turmeric. Now you talk about the Mediterranean diet. Uh, turmeric is very uh, healthy. And one of the last things that they said is uh, very healthy for you is uh, broccoli. And broccoli can be either stir-fried, could be steamed, could be boiled, or in, uh, you know, just raw with a little ranch dip or something. But those are the five things that uh, are stated as being very, very healthy for you and should be part of your diet uh, in some, to some extent. Now, we're not asking everybody to change right away and uh, think this is the best thing in the world for me. Uh, try it a little by little. And once you start doing it, do it two or three times. And after a while, it just becomes part of your, uh, your habit and something you, uh, you feel comfortable doing. Uh, if you don't like it at the beginning, you don't have to use it right away. But remember these things. And if you're able to pick up maybe just one or two things out of all the things we're going to talk about today and put that into your re regimen, it, it's going to help you out. I just wanted to mention that the Okinawans have uh, the 80% rule, which is uh, hara hachibu. So only don't fill yourself up to your bursting, but uh, just try and eat 80%. So what I do is I know when I'm like halfway full, and then I'll take one or two more bites and then stop. And then you can think, oh, okay, I only ate 80%. And eating that much, you're still you still got your nutritious uh, intake of food and you're not going to be uh, malnourished or, you know, starving. So uh, that's just something that the Okinawans follow is uh, only to eat until they're 80% full. So the next thing we'd like to uh, discuss or talk about is exercise. Now, exercise uh, to some people is very daunting. Uh, to other people, it's just something that they've, they've done and they're, they're always doing and probably continue to do. But one of the things that uh, people talk about a lot is the 10,000 steps. And if you can get 10,000 steps a day in, you're, you're doing really well. Uh, however, for some people, 10,000 steps seems like climbing up Mount Everest. And, you know, it, it's almost like, well, I don't even want to try it. That's way too much. So let's take um, exercise as, you know, instead of something that uh, has to be done, as something that you can do, you can enjoy, and it's going to help you in, in the long run. So what should we do to start an, an exercise program, or what's a simple entry-level exercise, you think, Aunt Jay? What I do sometimes, if I remember, is as I'm brushing my teeth in the morning, I'll go find a wall in my bedroom, which coincidentally faces my uh, mirror, and I sit against the wall, lean against the wall, like in a sitting position, and it strengthens your legs, your thighs especially. So I'm brushing my teeth, sitting against the wall, and that's uh, a simple way to use up the time uh, that you're spending brushing your teeth. There's also, if I'm in the kitchen cooking, you know, the kitchen counter is there by the sink, so you can do push-ups, if you remember, and you're strengthening your arms. Uh, also, on YouTube or NHK, there's the um, uh, radio Taiso uh, exercise. Uh, you can either just listen to it or there's a visual if you watch it on YouTube um, where people are in the park doing very simple uh, exercises for seniors with your arms and legs. So that's kind of like a, a, a simple way of exercising without going to the gym or becoming uh, committed to a weekly uh, exercise class. Walking has always been considered one of the best exercises. Um, however, again, some people just don't like to walk. And so how would we you know, incorporate that into our, our daily routine? Well, some very simple things are uh, 
everybody probably has to go to the market. Everybody probably has to go to the bank. Everybody probably has uh, doctor appointments uh, here and there. What I would recommend is instead of trying to find a parking space as close as you can to the entrance, find something that's maybe you know half an aisle down or an aisle down from where you uh, intend to go and walk those extra 50, 100 steps. And if you do that, uh, although it's, it's not a big difference, it's still going to be a difference for you. Instead of using the escalator, you know, use the stairs uh, going up and going down. Of course, when you're going up or down stairs, you have to be very careful. Use handrails, and you know, if you have to take one step at a time, just take one step at a time. But that's you know, a point in exercising. Uh, what I like to do is uh, spend time out, outside in the yard uh, gardening. I, I used to do a lot of gardening, and now I don't quite do as much, but uh, still being out, uh, doing some trimming, do, doing some mowing, doing some uh, raking and cleaning uh, is, is good exercise. And it's also being out in the sun, vitamin D, I believe, is uh, very beneficial to, especially like seniors. Also walking in, uh, when you play golf. Uh, I try to play about uh, 36 holes a week. And I will focus on walking and carrying my bag with me. You know, although I don't you know, carry all the clubs and it's a light bag. Uh, but that always helps, um, you know, just being out. And even for those of you who play golf and ride in the cart, uh, what you can do is just take like every uh, par three and instead of riding the cart from the tee box to the green, just, you know, walk that 150, 170 yards. Uh, and, and again, it's just a s small steps at a time, but it will help. Um, Tycho is a, a very, very good exercise for uh, both uh, your mental, mental and physical well-being because you have to remember um, the songs, the beats, and you have to uh, be able to keep the posture and make the, the moves within Tycho. And uh, it's very, uh, very, very popular now. So, you know, most any event you go to that's uh, Japanese oriented, you're, you're going to have uh, Tycho. And then <clears throat> one of the last things that, uh, well, I'm, I've been interested in is uh, Tai Chi. And Tai Chi is considered a martial art, but it is just the, the slow rhythmic movements. And uh, I, I, I was watching a t Tai Chi class out in Pasadena and uh, I, I couldn't quite understand how that works. So I asked one of my friends who was, who was in the class and he is, uh, uh, he's a little bit younger than me. So he's about uh, late 60s. And uh, he has he, he has a bad back, and uh, but he still does gardening and he still does uh, mechanic stuff. And I asked him, I said, "Hey Bob, how uh, how do you like this Tai Chi?" And he said, "I, I really like it." And I says, "Why?" He says, "I've been doing it for about a year, and it has increased uh, I, my balance is so much better." And I said, just by doing these slow rhythmic exercises, and he says, yep, that's that's all it takes. Uh, they do they do it twice a week for about forty five minutes to an hour, and uh, he said it, it's great. It's helped him a great deal. And Angie, I know you have uh, a lot of exercises that you do in in your uh, life. What uh, what are some of those? Uh, well, the Obon Ondo season just ended, but. If you're able to, I encourage everyone to join the circle at the Obon to do ondo dancing. And they have practices throughout the city, different uh, Buddhist temples uh, to learn the dances. Or you can just jump right in and follow the person ahead of you. Uh, but that's a very good exercise. Uh, hands and legs and are concentrating on problem solving the next move, which is very good for uh, your mind. Uh, also, if you have a two-story house, try taking two steps at a time. Hold on to the rail instead of just going one, two, you know, one step at a time. Take two, and that will strengthen your um, thighs, and that'll aid you in balance. 
You know, a little side note to the, the, the two-story house. A lot of folks, uh, when uh, we get to be a certain age, uh, try to downsize from a two-story house to a one-story house just because you, know, you don't want to deal with stairs and having to go up and down and um, for emergencies and everything. Uh, one of our aunts, who is a very, very uh, health-conscious individual, uh, at, in her mid-80s, uh, sold her single-story house and bought a two-story house. And everyone was thinking, Auntie, why are you doing that? You shouldn't be doing the other way around. And she says, I want the steps because it's going to make me uh, exercise every day. And she is the auntie that uh, played golf into her 90s and uh, just was in very, very good condition um, up until probably the last six months of her life. So yeah, exercise is, is, is very important. And don't be intimidated by the 10,000 steps. Do as many steps as, as you can, um, as you feel comfortable doing. Uh, but as long as you're doing more steps than you have been doing. And even if it's you know a couple hundred a day, that's, that's better than, than not. And being up and about, being outside, and uh, being around people too. There's a couple of groups I, I'm, I'm very well aware of uh, that meet at the mall. They call them the, you know, the, wa the mall walkers. They'll meet once or twice a week. Uh, they'll bring coffee and donuts or snacks and uh, they spend a couple of hours together walking the malls, which is good because you don't have to worry about the outside weather, whether it's you know, too cold, too wet, or too hot. And again, uh, the more exercise you get, the longer you can do that. Uh, the better off uh, you're going to be in the long run. So what, ha what happens after we exercise? What do we want to do? Probably take a nap or sleep. So uh, let's talk a little bit about sleep and uh, you know, why it's important and what are some of the uh, easy ways to get a good night's sleep. And when we talk about a good night's sleep, uh, we're talking about you know, seven to eight hours of recuperative sleep uh, per night. A good night's sleep will reduce your ir irritability, your sleepiness, your slow reaction time, increase your focus, increase your brain power by repairing the uh, brain tissue, and increase your immune system functions by creating what's called cy cytokines, which fight inflammation, which is a, a very good thing. Angie, how, you sleep well at night? When I was working, I did not because I was worried about waking up on time. So, but now that I'm retired, I don't have a time schedule, so I do sleep better. John, and you and I were talking about uh, you know, using your cell phone or the computer late at night, which exposes you to the blue light. And uh, the blue light kind of mimics the sunshine, so your body thinks, oh, it's still daytime. Uh, I don't need to release any melatonin, which helps in sleep. So I have these glasses I got from my optom optometrist, and they block the blue light. Even though I uh, set my cell phone to be in the dark mode from sunset to sunrise, uh, I used it last night, uh, everything to try and encourage sleep, and it worked. Uh, around 10.30 I was sleepy, and then I got up at 6. So that's um, more than seven hours of sleep. So I encourage people to try and reduce the blue light uh, exposure before bedtime, like an hour before. And also I read that um, as you're sleeping, your brain uh, clears out the, your vessels in your brain, the, the particle, the proteins that are there. So um, that's why it's good to get a lot of rest, um, maybe six to seven, eight hours of sleep, so that you can have this cleaning done within your brain. And also, I take a nap. I try and take a nap every day around 2 o'clock, just 30 minutes or so. And that kind of uh, revives me and gets me going for the rest of the day. Yeah, those uh, naps are <clears throat> important. Um, we have lunch every so often with uh, old college friends. And one of the things we talk about, other than you know, all the aches and pains, are uh, the, the naps we take and how refreshing they are. It, it takes me back. I, I remember a story I heard about President uh, John Kennedy that uh, he, he didn't sleep much at all. However, he would take what, what were called uh, like power naps. 
So they're 15, 20, 20 minutes, half hour, two, three, four times a day. And it, you know, once he was up, he was, he was up and going. And so n naps are important. You know, some of the physiological things about a good night's sleep is, like I said before, it improves uh, your mood. Uh, it's uh, healthy for the heart because it gives the, the vascular system uh, a time to rest. Uh, it regulates blood sugar, uh, helps glucose enter the body cells. Um, not enough sleep increases the chances of type 2 diabetes. Um, it improves mental function, like NJ said, better problem serving and decision making. A lack of sleep affects the ability to the contrary. Um, we talked about the restored immune system and uh, also stress relief. And if, and if you think about uh, like the Olympics uh, for athletic performance, um, the day before you know, any of the big events, you see uh, most of the athletes really relaxing, um, sleeping, napping, uh, but making sure that the, the body is in the perfect condition. And then it also it helps maintain a uh, healthy weight. So those are some of the uh, good aspects of sleep. And again, um, for those of you, you know, Angie was talking about the, uh, the blue light. Um, those blue lights probably didn't exist uh, 20, 25 years ago because everybody wasn't attached to their electronic devices as much as they are now. But I'm sure there's many, many of you who know that uh, uh, caffeine is going to affect your sleep. And a lot of people will stop drinking coffee or e even tea, you know, by late afternoon. Uh, so it should be kind of the same thing with your, your phone or your computer is uh, if you know it is going to affect your sleep or your ability to go to sleep, then either use the, uh, uh, the, the glasses or, you know, turn off the uh, computers or your phones about a half hour, 45 minutes before you're ready to go to sleep. Um, some of the other things that uh, you want to have is a good sleep environment, uh, cool, dark, quiet room, avoid caffeine, nicotine, and uh, surprisingly enough, alcohol. Uh, they've done studies on alcohol prior to sleep, and what they found is, although alcohol will put you to sleep, uh, the sleep is, is not a deep, sound sleep. And it's, uh, so don't think that because you have a, a drink before you go to sleep, it's going to help you. It will help you, you know, not be awake, but it won't help you with all the uh, regenerative features that sleep should uh, you should obtain through a good night's sleep. Uh, daily exercise helps your sleep and um, a routine. Uh, one of the things that we find as, as we age too is our, our sleep is usually or can be affected by our uh, having to get up and go to the bathroom at night. When you get up to go to the bathroom, a couple things, you, you, you want to be safe also. So when you get up, sit on the side of your bed for 30 seconds or so to make sure that your, your balance is going to be okay. Um, make sure you also know the way to the bathroom and that route should be lighted. Uh, some people I, I know will leave uh, a hall light on all night just to make sure that you know there's nothing in the way, they're not going to trip or they're not going to run, any, run into anything. So be very careful when you get up uh, in, at night and also you know, this kind of goes along with diet too. When you get up in the morning, one of the things that's always recommended is to start off the day with a glass of water uh, before the coffee, before uh, anything else as you get up, stretch, make sure uh, everything's in place, and then have a nice glass of water before we start today that kind of gets everything uh, moving within your system. The last thing we want to talk about, socialization, and why that's important to a, uh, a healthy life. And socialization is something that, you know, we, we don't really think a whole lot about because most of us are, you know, pretty social beings. Uh, but what happens if we are socially isolated? What happens if uh, we're alone a lot? Um, Angie, do you have any thoughts on? I think uh, those who don't socialize or get together with friends would rather just stay home. I think they're missing out on the 
uh, opportunity to uh, talk to people, use your mind for uh, sentence structure, for conversation, uh, learning new things. There are uh, different gatherings uh, at the local community centers, and it's hard to just join. So it takes a, a concerned friend to uh, persuade someone to step out of their home and maybe go out to lunch. And I think there's a big benefit with that, leaving your home and uh, meeting up with someone else, even if it's just one person, and then meet more people and progress to a larger gathering. One of the things about social isolation, uh, we did some uh, research on this uh, earlier. I said people that are socially isolated, uh, it's, it's almost a physical problem in that uh, they related the fact that uh, people that are socially isolated are, are almost like uh, somebody, an individual, smoke 12 to 15 cigarettes a day. So there's a the physical problem with that. Socialization keeps one's mind active. It's one of the keys to remaining healthy for as long as possible. Uh, what's some of the most important and easiest ways to socialize are you know, going to church or temple, being a member of the community center, doing some kind of activities with the group. I know people who uh, are in uh, dance clubs, sports of all kind. We talked about taiko, we talked about tai chi, uh, we talked about the uh, ondo dancing, uh, which is all part of uh, socialization because there are other people there. Pickleball is very popular right now. It's an easy way to play tennis. And uh, we just, uh, Cato just participated in the Orange County uh, Pickleball uh, last weekend in uh, uh, Orange County. A lot of people there and uh, a lot of people having a good time. If you are a person that is, uh, you know, maybe just retired and has worked for 20 or 30 years and uh, getting used to, you know, not having to go to work and you're not exactly sure what you want to do. I, you know you w didn't want to work anymore, but after that, what are you going to do? And if you're, you know, someone who's, you know, not terribly outgoing, don't have a huge circle of friends or anything, how, how do you enter into that world of socialization? One of the things that I would recommend is just find out what you want to do, what you enjoy doing. And amazingly enough, there are a lot of people that enjoy doing the same things. Uh, if you like to read, there are book clubs. If you like to write, there are writing clubs, uh, different kinds of sports. Um, if nothing else, um, volunteering. Uh, it's, it's amazing how many people are able to join a social circle by just volunteering. Actually, Angie and I got together some years ago because she volunteered, and I was uh, uh, an employee of CARO at the time, and we got together and we taught classes and we did all kinds of stuff together, which is a, a good thing to do. Having a purpose, getting up in the morning and feeling like there's something that you can do uh, that's going to make you feel good. Um, it, it can be very simple. It could be like, I think I will uh, wash the car today. I think I will make a new recipe. I think I will help somebody do something. Um, and that is, I, I'm not sure this is exactly right, but there's a Japanese term called ikegai, which is uh, life's purpose and serving happiness. I'd like to thank uh, NJ for taking time out of her day, and the uh, traffic was just horrible coming into uh, downtown. And uh, she showed up, and she was still smiling and very positive. And uh, thank you very much for your time and effort. We uh, and actually she brought some props in, and uh, which which is which is also very nice. Uh, NJ, anything uh, you'd like to say? Well, thank you for having me here, and I hope the two of us were able to help those who are listening. And maybe you'll be able to try some of our suggestions. Um, I hope you do, because I'd like to see you uh, live to be 100 years old. Let me uh, tell you about the brain health. If you want to visit cato.org news, you can find the article under Healthy Body and Mind. And again, the information in this podcast is not intended to be medical advice. Please consult with your health care provider about you 
or your loved one's medical condition. And if you haven't already, um, please make sure to follow us, Cato, on Instagram and Facebook at Cato Connect to see what we are all up to. So I thank you all for taking time out of your day to be with us. And until next time, I wish you all blue skies and green lights. Mm -hmm.